Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's episode, we'll talk Bulldog men's and women's basketballs. Both teams were on the road this past weekend. We'll also check in with Ferris State Hockey as they played their final two regular season home games. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog basketball, joined by Bulldog guard Ben Davidson. Ben, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rob. Obviously, I know uh, before we get into this past weekend's games, uh, last week you had an early week game, a uh, busy stretch last week, took on Northwood on Monday and uh, really got back to playing some great basketball. Yeah, no, it was nice. I mean, we lost two in a row on the road, which, you know, our first two conference losses. So we knew we had to come out in our first half versus Northwood. We didn't really play hard, honestly. And we kind of had a talk at halftime. And then in the second half, we really turned it up and got back to playing what we, you know, what we're meant to play like, so. Obviously, you got a big win over Northwood and uh, kind of carried that momentum uh, into the week as you took on Parkside on Thursday and got a huge win on the road. Yeah, that Parkside game was probably one of our better games of the season. Um, they have the leading scorer in the GLIAC and Trey Croft. He's just as talented as it gets, and we kind of held him. I mean, he, I don't know how many he ended up having, but we did a pretty good job on him and uh, ended up winning by, at least, I think, like 15, 17 points, so that was nice, yeah. As we go to some of the highlights from that game, uh, playing on the road, always always tough to play on the road in the GLIAC. Yeah, no, there's no easy games in the GLIAC at all, um, especially a place like Parkside. They're a team, they got they run a lot of ball screens, so, I mean, if they're hot, it's going to be hard to beat them. We won that, that game with our defense, definitely, um, the Parkside game. The, obviously a very talented team with the leading scorer in the GLIAC, and we, I think we played overall great defense, yeah. Our kind of back and forth uh, here in the opening 10 minutes of the first half, but uh, you guys really took control in the, the second part of that uh, opening half and, and built an 11-point halftime lead. Yeah, I think Lee hit two uh, threes in a row, and it was tied, and then we went up six like that, and, it, and that kind of carried our momentum, and then Walt got going. It was good to see Walt get back going. I think he had 24 points that game, which is, which is what we're used to seeing him do, and it, it was just awesome uh, to see Walt get going, and it was just a, a really good win. Obviously, I uh, hear one of the threes that Lee Higgins uh, hit that you mentioned. Uh, yeah. Not only did you score the basketball, though, but uh, really played uh, strong defensively here in this contest. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, they had 23 points at half. And I think uh, at halftime, they told us we ended the half on like a 13-0 run. We were down like 23-19, and um, they didn't score for like the last five minutes of the half. So that was, that was nice. And we saw a few shots go in, and it, it definitely uh, helped us win the game, yeah. Obviously, here in the second half, uh, really uh, expanded that lead. Uh, Carried it all the way through uh, the second half of action. What, what's it like playing with guys like uh, Walt Kelser, you mentioned, with 24 points? Other guys that can really score the basketball. Yeah, that's the thing about our team. We, I mean, I think we have four people on our team who average double digit points, and um, we have other people who can score double digit points. I mean, you saw Veas on Saturday score 20. So we just have so many people on our team who can, you know, just just score and we shoot open shots and it really doesn't matter who scores as long as you know a couple people are doing it. Yeah. Uh, obviously uh, able to work uh, 10 guys into the rotation uh, here and everyone played uh, a lot of minutes uh, here in the second half of this ball game. Yeah no it's nice uh, there's not a lot of teams in the GLIAC who play as many people as we do and so we were able to you know use our depth and we've done it all seasons we've won so many games just by playing with our depth and people you know accepting their role and just being great in their role yeah. When you're on a road trip like that, uh, where you're playing a couple games uh, out of town for three or four days, it, I'm, sure, I'm sure it makes it more enjoyable to win that, that first game of the road trip. Yeah, it's always, uh, you know, a recipe to success is uh, split on the road and win all your home games. So if you win that first one, you know, you, you just try to get the one on Saturday too. So it definitely is. And we weren't able to get the one on Saturday, obviously. But, uh, I mean, it set us up nice, yeah. As we go to the highlights of Saturday's game, uh, took on Purdue Northwest and another uh, challenging place to play in the GLIAC and a team that certainly had nothing to, to lose in a game like this. Yeah, and it was their senior night. Uh, that's no excuse, but and they just played hard. Honestly, we didn't really make shots, and I think it kind of it affected us a little bit. Um, we didn't come out early making shots like we're used to, and I mean, I was proud of how we battled. I think we were down seven points with a minute left, and we forced overtime, so that was really cool. But I mean, yeah, they they played hard. They, they played aggressive and they, they were definitely a better team. Obviously, uh, you took on both of these teams uh, here early in the season, first week in a conference play, and a lot of uh, changes uh, for, for both teams going over the course of the season. Yeah, it was weird because they were just like a whole new team. We hadn't played them since, you know, December, and it was at, you know, it was at Big Rapids High School, so it was just like, just a lot, a lot of new faces. They had a couple of kids that weren't on their team the second time, and then they had like kids that, we, like one of their players didn't play the first time we played him and he was really good for him. So, I mean, it, it was nice to, you know, see him again. It felt like they were kind of like a new team. We hadn't played him in so long, both of them. But yeah, we weren't able to get it done on Saturday. Yeah. 
here in the second half, down five at halftime. You come back in the second half, and it seemed like uh, you guys uh, kept uh, having to try to play play catch up the entire second half. Yeah, it just again, shots weren't falling. I think we went like two and nineteen from three this game, and you're not going to win many games going two and nineteen from three. And uh, like I said though before, like as you can see right there, down twelve with six minutes left, and we forced overtime. I mean, we never quit, we never do, and but yeah, it wasn't able, it wasn't good enough. Obviously, uh, here are some big plays uh, going down the stretch. Uh, Vias Grisoulis with the basket there, uh, finished with 20, and finally one of the, the threes that yeah. went here. Lee Higgins, a huge three, and then uh, you get the ball back uh, after a turnover and a basket from Logan Ryan to tie it up. Yeah, it was cool. It was crazy. I feel like we had like three steals like in huge situations. We even had one at the end, but we didn't make the shot at the buzzer that would have forced double overtime. So I was that was really cool. I mean, usually you don't see that. You don't see a steal. You have to foul, maybe bank on missed free throws, but we were able to get steals and. Logan was able to make that huge basket to, you know, force overtime. And yeah, I mean, we just didn't shoot well enough to win the game probably. Yeah. Obviously they did. They yeah. hit a couple of huge threes that uh, really helped their cause uh, here in overtime. And uh, a team that we mentioned had nothing to nothing to lose in a game like that, maybe better than their, their record would indicate. Yeah, they're definitely better than their record indicates. Um, and then their, uh, their two seniors both played really well. I mean, it was their last home game ever. So they, uh, and then especially Freels, he had a really good, good game and it was just they were better that night there's no bad teams in our conference that's for sure I know obviously you put that one behind you now a lot of goals uh, still out there in front of you here as you you come back home a uh, big game against Michigan Tech who uh, you're right now tied with in the conference standings. yeah so we're both 15 and 3 and like you said that these are the games that you dream about you know growing up playing college basketball you know you went on we went on Thursday we get at least a share of the GLIAC title probably and outrights if we can get on Saturday too so like it, I mean we're still in a situation where we can obtain all our goals so I mean we look at it and we just we still have everything in front of us so. obviously Michigan Tech uh, on Thursday Northern Michigan on Saturday both good opponents uh, from the Upper Peninsula that you'll see for the second time this year yeah both of them are really well they, they both have like a unique style and they stick to it no matter what and uh, you know Tech's hot they've won like eight games in a row we were able to beat them at their place which is a tough place to win but honestly that that game's in the past it doesn't really matter anymore the, the, all that matters is this game on Thursday for all the marbles, yeah. Obviously, uh, what, what's it like uh, been like playing at Ferris State and, and having that experience to play for championships like this? It's been awesome. I mean, my second year here, we were able to win the GLIAC, and COVID cut our chance to be able to make a run in the tournament, so that was that kind of sucked. But, I mean, just I mean the, the culture that we have, the coaches that we have, and the players that we have just really provide us with a chance every season to, you know, make a GLIAC push, and that's what it's awesome to be around, yeah. Well, Ben, thanks for the time. Uh, best of luck uh, here as you get ready to play your final two regular season home games this weekend. Thanks so much. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.